The excitement is building as is the crowd here at the Bellevue Hyatt. I have Susan Hutchison, the Washington GOP chair, standing with me right now. First of all, we heard the numbers about Ohio just came in. Your reaction? Well, that wasn't a surprise. I think, uh, if anything, the polling will underpoll Donald Trump. And so any states that we knew were in his column initially, I'd be surprised if they didn't stay there. So Ohio was one of them. You were one of Trump's staunchest reporters here in the state. I know you received a lot of flack for what happened after the Access Hollywood tape and the remark that you had made about Trump being a Democrat at the time. Looking back on that time, your thoughts about it, how you feel about it? Well, you know, what I support is the Trump voters. And they chose him in this state, and I support them. We need them to vote, and we need them to vote Republican all the way down the ballot. And so it's uh, it's important that, and I got a lot of flack from the media um, because they put words in my mouth that weren't there. What are we seeing? Something exciting. Yeah, they're, they're certainly reacting to some latest numbers here. They are reacting to Ohio. Oh, okay. Yeah. They know it's a, an important prize. Um, this is going to happen all night long, I'm sure. Got so, it. Your reaction to those numbers? Well, it's very good news. We expected him to win Ohio because the polling had shown that he was strong there. And so that's a really important battleground state. Uh, there's an old saying that you can't win the presidency without winning Ohio, so maybe we can just wrap it up now. There have been a lot of talk, especially among Trump supporters, about polling and how suspicious they've been of it. We've seen Hillary be up in a lot of the polls lately. You, your thoughts about how the polls have been going and, and, and the numbers you're seeing tonight? Well, I think the polls have been very volatile. And so when you see that volatility and you're not seeing a steady uh, sameness, over the days and uh, weeks, I think that it says anything's up for grabs. And uh, this is an emotional election this year, I think, in a lot of different ways, about both candidates. And so um, I do think that when all is said and done, uh, the electorate was ready for change. And so perhaps these good numbers for Trump, especially in Michigan and Minnesota and Wisconsin, which were states that nobody expected to go his way. If these numbers continue to look good for him, then I think that we can be pretty assured that it's a change election. You stuck with Donald Trump longer when a lot of people sort of peeled off and said, you know, I, I can't support him anymore. A lot of it had to do with the tape. You, you made some controversial remarks. I know a lot of people kind of gave you a lot of flack for. Looking back on it and saying what you did, I think it was something along the lines that, you know, Trump was a Democrat back when he made those comments. When you reflect back on it, what are your thoughts? Well, what I was saying was people change. And so uh, we have to be able to allow people to change. Everybody has something in their past. And I, you know, I said his comments were repulsive and indecent. But let's move forward now. And it's my job as the state chairman to support our nominee. Uh, that's not newsmaking. But for some reason, some in the media thought it was. They thought that I should peel off, and I, I'm not going to. I support our voters. Our voters are worthy of my loyalty. And so uh, without them, we don't have a Republican Party. So my loyalty is always with the voters, and they chose Donald Trump. Some people have talked about how fractured the Republican Party is after all of this, and not only nationally, but also here in Washington state, if Trump becomes the president, how does he and how do you help the Republican Party move forward from here on? Well, I think it's going to be very exciting with a Trump victory to see the people he surrounds himself with. And I'm already very impressed with his vice presidential pick. I love Rudy Giuliani. I think Ben Carson is an honorable man. And all these surrogates that surround Donald Trump should make people feel pretty good about the decisions he makes, about the people who advise him. So uh, going forward, as he picks a cabinet and so forth, those are the things to look for, is who are the wise individuals, men and women, uh, who will surround him and help him make the right decisions as a president. I always have to ask you the what if question. What if things don't go his way tonight? What will happen to the Republican Party and all of his Trump supporters? I mean, they have really stuck through him through thick and thin. What happens to those voices, I guess? Well, that's a good question, because I do think that there is a movement quality to what Donald Trump has done. And so you don't just end a movement with an election. So we'll see. But um, I think that Donald Trump has given a voice to an awful lot of people who did not feel power 
at all. In fact, they, they felt that everything was against them. And so it's interesting to me to see how strongly they've reacted to this election season. And uh, I've been, I think my uh, feelings about Donald Trump began to change in late spring as I began to listen to the people who supported Trump and hear what they were saying. And I began to understand the huge divide in this country. And it's not necessarily Republican and Democrat. It's the powerful versus the powerless. Susan Hutchison, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Okay, back to you in the newsroom.